tensions between U.S. foreign policy and Israel's actions, particularly under Netanyahu's leadership, highlight a complex relationship. The U.S. has long been a staunch ally of Israel, providing extensive military aid based on shared strategic interests and values. However, this support often struggles to influence Israel's decisions, especially in moments of conflict. We supply Israel with billions of dollars in military aid, mm -hmm. and yet Prime Minister Netanyahu seems to be charting his own course. The Biden-Harris administration has pressed him to agree to a ceasefire. He's resisted. You urged him not to go into Lebanon. He went in anyway. He has promised to make Iran pay for the missile attack, and that has the potential of expanding the war. Does the U.S. have no sway over Prime Minister Netanyahu? The aid that we have given Israel allowed Israel to defend itself against 200 ballistic missiles that were just meant to attack the Israelis and the people of Israel. And when we think about the threat that Hamas, Hezbollah presents, um, Iran, um, I think that it is without any question our imperative to do what we can to allow Israel to defend itself against those kinds of attacks. Now, the work that we do diplomatically with the leadership of Israel is an ongoing pursuit around making clear our principles, which include the need for humanitarian aid, the need for this war to end, the need for a deal to be done, which would release the hostages and, and, and create a ceasefire. And we're not going to stop in terms of putting that pressure but, on but, Israel and, and in the region, including Arab leaders. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. Well, Bill, the work that we have done has resulted in a number of movements in that region by Israel that were very much prompted by or a result of uh, many things, including our advocacy for what needs to happen in the region. Do we have a, a, a real close ally in Prime Minister Netanyahu? I think, with all due respect, the better question is, do we have an important alliance between the American people and the Israeli people? And the answer to that question is yes. Kamala Harris defends this military aid, arguing that it enables Israel to protect itself from grave threats, like recent missile launches. The U.S.-Israel alliance is founded on ensuring Israel's security in a volatile region, especially given threats from organizations such as Hamas and Hezbollah, backed by Iran. While Harris underscores Israel's right to self-defense, she also calls for a diplomatic resolution to the ongoing conflict. In an interview, CBS's Bill Whitaker challenges Harris on whether the U.S. has lost its ability to sway Netanyahu, pointing to examples like Israel's resistance to calls for a ceasefire, its invasion of Lebanon, and threats of retaliation against Iran. The gap between U.S. diplomacy and Netanyahu's unilateral, aggressive actions is undeniable. Harris insists that U.S. advocacy has led to some changes, but her answers remain vague and lack concrete examples, suggesting a more limited influence. This tension underscores deeper issues in the U.S.-Israeli relationship. Despite close ties and immense financial support, Netanyahu's government often prioritizes its security concerns over U.S. recommendations. To the public, these actions may seem like Israel exercising its sovereignty, making the necessary moves to defend its people in hostile environments. Netanyahu's rejection of a ceasefire and actions in Lebanon can be viewed as pragmatic responses to threats posed by Hezbollah and other Iranian proxies. Harris attempts to steer the conversation away from focusing solely on Netanyahu, framing the U.S.-Israeli relationship as one rooted in the bond between the two nations' peoples, not just their governments. This distinction is crucial. Despite leadership disagreements, the foundation of the U.S.-Israel alliance remains strong, built on democratic values and shared interests. Yet, Harris's responses leave key questions unanswered. Can the U.S. truly pressure Israel when its security is on the line? The implicit answer seems to be no. Israel, navigating a dangerous region, 
often takes actions that diverge from U.S. diplomatic goals, driven by immediate security needs rather than diplomacy. Airstrikes in Lebanon and threats against Iran are responses to pressing threats, not subtle diplomatic considerations. Harris's push for humanitarian aid and a ceasefire, though well-intentioned, exposes the gap between idealism and reality. Israel's war against groups like Hamas, who operate within civilian areas, forces difficult choices. Calls for aid or ceasefires must be weighed against the need to neutralize threats to Israeli civilians. Even when Israel's actions seem harsh, they can be viewed as necessary for its survival in a hostile environment.